MC Search went on your show mm-hmm. and uh, said said a bunch of things about me. Saw that. I was there. You were there. Uh, I found that interesting. Uh, he claimed that uh, I promised, I tricked him into an interview claiming that I would uh, link his um, his book. His book. Uh, you know, in the actual video itself. And I, I somehow tricked him by not pu- not putting the link where I promised, hmm. right? So I listened to this and I'm like, okay, all right, all right. The interesting thing about that conversation that he did not mention was the interview came out and it comes out in parts, as you know, right? right? So, so the, the parts are coming out I have not heard anything. You know, he's not hitting me or saying, hey, can you change anything or whatever. It's coming out. It's coming out. It's getting a lot of views. I think it ended up being his biggest interview ever, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken. After the interview was done, he texted me. He said, hey, listen, uh, I'm working with this documentary company, and they want you to take down this whole interview, or they want to buy it from you. And I said, well, thank you for the offer, but, you know, unfortunately, we don't sell anything. Right. Oh, well, what if we give you this big I'm like... Once again, thank you for the offer, but I'm not, it's not like we didn't talk prices. I'm like, I, I'm just not interested in selling my content. You know, the content is there with a bigger purpose and so forth. We never talked again. And then he goes on your platform and creates this whole story about how I, how I cheated him and lied to him and so forth. Not mentioning what I feel is the most important part of the story. But even the thing he said was basically like, I wanted Vlad to put my link to my book in his description of his videos. And he, I, I believe, said that you did end up putting it in the link to the videos, but that it took a while and he didn't sell any books as a result. Or no, I think he had a GoFundMe to make a book, didn't he? Yeah, it was something like that. It was like a GoFundMe, yeah. I think he like holds you personally responsible for right. not hitting the dollar amount right. on the GoFundMe, yeah. All right, let me tell you. And let me tell you this. First and foremost, I never promised MC Search that I would put a link to anything within the video because I don't do that with anybody. Look at my 10,000 plus videos and you will not see a link within the video to someone's GoFundMe or or whatever else. We simply do not do that. We've never done that. We never will do that. And if he brought that up and said, this is a stipulation of doing the interview, I would say, well, we'll just pass on the interview. So that's just a, a flat out lie. You're that against helping somebody sell something? Because no. normally, I, I, if somebody I will, asks about that, gladly, I'll be like, All right, yeah. I will gladly help people sell stuff. But we also don't want to diminish the actual video itself by putting a whole bunch of text at the bottom and making it look like a commercial. Oh, on the video? Yeah. I'm talking about in the description. It was in the description. It, oh, it was okay. in the description of every of every video, except, except for the full interview. Oh, okay. In every clip, there was a link to his book. And listen, at the end of the day... You know, I'm sorry that MC Search did not hit his like minimum on his GoFundMe project. You know, I wasn't aware that I was 100% his marketing arm for making this successful or not. I'm sorry that MC Search did not reach his financial success based on the interview that he did with Vlad TV, but I can't be responsible for someone's success. Hmm. I said I would do the interview. We rolled it out. It was successful. It got viewed millions of times. I thought it was a dope interview, but the fact that he failed in this project, you know, I heard him mention that he blames Lil Dicky for some TV show, not, you know, I mean, this is a guy that's blaming everyone for, for his own failings. Oh, it's his fault, it's his fault, it's his fault, it's his fault. It's his fault. And, and it really kind of just annoys me because MC Search was someone that I've looked up to for a very long time since I was a kid. He was the first, I feel like, white rapper that came out as traditionally hip hop. Mm. The Beastie Boys Damn. came out before him, but they were more like kind of punk rockers. Right. You know, they they were just sort of frat boys, you know. It was I cool, mean, but it was it was a it was bit a of a parody. Thing. It was a bit of a parody in the beginning. This guy came out with third base, you know, I mean, he had the high top fade with the three on the back, and, and he he rapped traditionally and he had like cosigns from other other big rappers, and he was on Def Jam. And it was like it was an inspiration to, to see someone who looked like me, a, a white Jewish kid, doing it like that. And I think that. Part of the reason why I am where I am today is because people like MC Search laid the foundation. So to hear him go and make up these lies about me and blame me and and, and say that I told him this and whatever and not mentioning the real reason because he just wanted me to take down the whole video is is disappointing. Like this is why like I sometimes hate getting to know the people that I look up to. Mm. You know? I feel it. Yeah. 
I mean, I was uh, I was surprised he said that just because I had already noticed uh, when I was doing the prep for the interview that he had had that GoFundMe and that it didn't uh, reach its goal or whatever. Yeah. And I, I just think, you know, sometimes people think that when they go on somebody else's platform that it's maybe going to, like, do more than, you know, like, if you have something to promote, I just don't think, like, the average No Jumper fan or the average Vlad fan is probably going to buy a book based on an interview. Like, realistically, once I'm done watching an hour and a half long interview with somebody, the last thing I'm thinking is, oh, I got to read this guy's book. You know, usually I feel like I've kind of gotten what I want from the interview. And, uh, yeah, especially the GoFundMe. Like, this is kind of a foreign concept, I think, to most rap fans that they're going to, like, donate money so that someone can make something in the future. I feel like maybe that's something that would make a little bit more sense to like other demographics. But yeah, I was surprised that he just thought that that was going to move the needle for him so much. Yeah. And then I get the blame for it not moving the the needle enough. It's yeah. like, okay, I guess, you know, this, that, that victim mentality with people that I just really just always dislike, yeah. you know, you always just blame everyone else for your failures. It's his fault. It's his fault. Uh, it's little Dickie's fault, my, my TV show. You know what I mean? Like, and this is the, listen, and this is the old school 80s, 90s rapper mentality of, you know, you wait for a bigger entity like a Def Jam or a VH1 to cut you some big check, you know, as opposed to actually putting in the groundwork to get these things off the ground and, and really like build something on your own. Mm. You know, you don't have that hand holding. So when they have these projects that end up failing or never getting off the ground, they just want to blame someone else as opposed to like, hey, listen, maybe I'm not set up to do something like this on my own. Probably should have gone through a bigger company as opposed to doing a GoFundMe. But it is what it is. I haven't talked to him since whatever with MC Search. Yeah, <laughs> you I know, mean, To me, if you're pushing a book, it's like, I mean, I know there's people who make money putting books out and everything. But if you're pushing a book, just consider your audience. Like if you already have a huge audience, like Vlad, if you put out a book right now, about your life, I could see you selling a, a decent amount yeah, of copies. It you won't know? be a New York Times bestseller. Right, but I could okay. see it selling decent because you have four something million subscribers already yeah. paying attention to you. I had a, a journalist dude like ask me about doing Patreon and I was just thinking in my head, I'm like, you have like a thousand followers and you're asking me about how to start a Patreon. Like the last thing you need to be worrying about is asking your tiny audience for money. Right. You need to be thinking about building an audience and yeah. then trying, like to me, if I put out a book and I sold 10,000 copies, it's like, that would be the reward at the end of, or not the end, but after many, many years of creating right. content for free on the internet, mm -hmm. you know, like if, if you're trying to get a message out or you want to get something out there to the world in this day and age, you absolutely pretty much have to give it out for free and then hope that you can figure out a premium version of that at some point or whatever. It's just, you, you know, it's, it's not to just go straight to the book is, and, and just knowing that most people aren't going to read books. It just seems like a, ch yeah, a, ch a challenge, too. you know? That far too. <laughs>